And here we are on uh, Golden News TV for a very special stress awareness show. And yes, it's the bad word. Everybody says, oh gosh, I'm really stressed. Oh my goodness, you know, it was such a stressful day. And oh, that was really stressing. And yet we live with stress. But don't we know really, do we know really what stress is all about? Or we just use the word because that's the way that it capsulates everything around being irritated, angry, frustrated, not sleeping well, not eating well, not drinking enough water. Uh, our minds and, and brains are buzzing with negative things around, negative thoughts around what, who we are, what we like to achieve in the world, but we don't know how to stop it. So, so yes, and all of these things can cause stress, right? So The Big Clip is a book that I highly recommend if you'd like to know a little bit more about what stops you from being in the flow. And uh, in, that, in that particular book, uh, there's a section when he calls it the upper limit. You may have read the book, you may have not. And stress is one of these things that causes you to, to sort of reach a ceiling in a way, you know, sort of that's kind of a limit you. So you may not do it consciously, you may not want to, of course, be stressed, but there's ways around it, ways around how we can actually minimize being stressed and, and how we can say, okay, but if it's a stressful situation, how can I get out of it in very simple, holistic ways? And I am going to say holistic because on my shows, I am very much about how you can become more conscious, mindful, joyous, and prosperous in life. So welcome to Golden News TV. I'm Chrisula Sirigu, the Golden News, and I have got a wonderful panel here with me. All of us have experienced stress, and we still experience stress. We cannot really escape from it, but how can we maximize our life, although stress is part of our lives? That's, that's a big question, right? So I would like us to be as real, as vulnerable, as, as authentic, as uh, you know, sharing stories, how you could actually got out of a stressful situation. And you're here now to share your story and help other people to be more in flow, to live life with ease and joy, with a big smile on our faces. Yes, we love, we love being with people, smiley people. So, so thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for, for watching this back again when, when uh, you're going to have this link in your, in your inbox. And uh, I'm going to be sharing a little bit about uh, a stress and a, a wonderful self-care holistic tool that I will recommend to you, not because I am the, the author behind it, but because a number of people involved in this is called the Book of Soulful Musings. Throughout April, it is on a special book offer because it is Stress Awareness Month. April is Stress Awareness Month. And also the 23rd of April, we're going to have another special show dedicated to uh, understanding stress and how to become more conscious around it and the remedies around it. And uh, so you're welcome. If you like to what you're going to watch, you're going to hear on this show to come and join us again with a different panel. Maybe some of us here, we're going to be again on the 23rd of April. So that's just to give you, give you, an, 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 a, you know, like the heads up what's coming in the near future for you and all of you wonderful life explorers. So all the information about how you can get your, your special offer, a uh, book of software musings, uh, it's on the Eventbrite link. And also I'm going to be adding this information uh, when I upload this, uh, this uh, show on my YouTube channel. Okay, including everybody, all the names of the people involved here, all the holistic educators, coaches, and authors involved on the panel show today. So you can get in touch with them. Okay, so, right. So there, probably you may have heard about stress, about uh, causing what causes stress uh, is, is something that you may have had a documentary about. You may have been attending a, a webinar or you may have read lots of books, but still, still you, you, you're not certain, you're not, you're not sure how to go about it. And it is a complicated uh, uh, you know, path because we humans, we are complicated, right? So there's so many parts of us, we don't really know how they function. And uh, stress, when it kicks in, you know, it affects you on a, on a physical level, but also on a, your mental capacity. So you, you get really 
you know, uh, confused. You, know, you may have heard of the, of the thing say, oh, I cannot think straight. And why is that? Because when we are in that sort of um, uh, uh, fight or flight mode, what tends to do, the blood circulation goes at a very high level and then everything goes into your, into your system, in your muscles, but nothing works around your brain. Your brain goes like, boom, stopping. So that's, that's what causes you, then you say, oh my goodness, I can't think clearly. I, can't, I don't know what to do. And then you have a blank moment, right? You have experienced those moments. So what can we do then when we are in that uh, flight or uh, fight situation or another way, another mode that they use is also freeze when basically you decide to absolutely do nothing and what we call it sort of, sort of numbness. So you, just, you, don't, you, don't, you don't allow anything to come through to, to you know, you don't want to, to, uh, to feel, to, to become upset, to become anxious about it. And then there's some sort of numbness. And then, and then you, feel, you feel completely disconnected from others. But still, that can cause you a lot of stress, even if you don't particularly want to deal with the situation. So either you are in a situation and you feel really uptight and upset about it to the point you cannot sleep right or you cannot eat uh, or you have got no no interest in doing much because your stressful situation takes over your life uh, or you may decide to say you know i'm not going to do anything about it and you leave it and you say uh, realize at some point that it's not going to go away you've got to face it it is a challenge situation you've got to face it and then that causes you stress as well. <laughs> so there you are. Now, I'm going to come to, to uh, my panelists here on, on the show, and I'm going to be asking um, how they dealt with their stressful situation. Uh, but first of all, you know, they're going to share a little bit about what caused the situation for them and then how they got out of it, okay? One thing that we all know, when we're stressed, probably we don't particularly want to eat or we eat too much. It could be either or, yeah? It depends on personality, you know, it's not like, a, it's just, just a choice of how, how you behave, how you respond to, uh, to life's uh, challenges. So, so uh, I will come to you, uh, Samantha. I would like to introduce to Samantha, uh, hopefully I pronounce your surname correctly, Samantha you Houghton. Yes, yeah, Samantha yeah. Houghton. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and it's, it's something that uh, I have been in touch with Samantha over the last few months because uh, stress can actually create uh, what we call eating disorders, and it's a very fashionable thing. And I don't call it fashion just because I'm into fashion; it's just because something these days happens a lot. It doesn't happen only with adults, but equally happens with children. So, so eating yes. disorders, eating disorders is something that uh, speaks to my heart. And uh, I've been a teacher for the last 28 years. I've been involved with teaching children and teenagers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I feel for them and I feel also for parents that they are involved in the situation. So Samantha, um, yeah. thank you for joining us. And, and, uh, and uh, will you please share a little bit about your story? And yeah. what yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and thank thank you for inviting me. Um, yeah, so I'll I'll go back to when I was younger. So as a, as a child, um, and could just give you put put it into context really. So I had I grew up in a house that was um, it looked to outsiders looking in that we were had everything you know nice home, went out had holidays, nice clothes, big house. Um, but actually, on the inside, my dad. Um, who was an alcoholic and my mum was always wrapped up in the pain of living with someone with an addiction mm. and so and I was the the old, oldest out of me and my brother and so but I was a very shy sensitive girl as well so I think there's, there's many different aspects to it I really really struggled and then we had to move from the city to a, a small village which going through starting to go through puberty is really challenging time anyway Mm -hmm. and everything just got too much for me at the new school I felt like I really didn't fit in there was some bullying and by this point I'd learned to use start to use food um, <laughs> the same way you use food as a comfort but actually it's anything but it's the opposite 
but I'll use that that phrase because people are familiar with that. So I'd started to comfy, which I, I guess I'd kind of learnt from my mum as well. And this is not to blame anybody. This is just how it was back then. And um, gradually through my teens, I ate more and more out of comfort. Um, and I had more bullying at school and then things got worse in my home life. This really took its toll on me and eventually... I became very, very depressed. I became, well, became suicidal and anxious and I refused to go to school. I was eventually admitted to a psychiatric unit when I was 15 and I was there for quite um, nearly a year and a half of my life. So I was missing school and it was really, um, as you can imagine, had a big impact. And when I came out of there, I wasn't really any further moved on because I'd not really got the tools which I have now which I didn't realise when you've not had something, you don't, you don't realise, especially as a young person. But I continue to use food because um, that was the one thing that I felt like it was my friend. Yeah. Um, but I was abusing it. Um, so I was overeating more and more and more. So fast forward to the end of my teen years. Um, and I had by this time put on a lot of weight. So I'm only short. I'm five foot. And I, I was about six stone overweight in the finish. Mm -hmm. And when it came to leaving college, because I'd managed to get back there, I, um, it, was, it felt too much for me to go out into the big wide world. So I took an attempt on my life um, and I got placed into an adult hospital. And whilst I was in there, one of the nurses was talking to me about my weight and, and we sort of like only skim the surface, but I surface. But I remember she gave me a diet to follow, so I went onto this diet, which was kind of like the first time I'd ever really properly dieted, and I had um, a lot of willpower, and I stuck to this diet rigidly. Uh, it's quite a, well; it was a very strict diet. Um, being so overweight, the weight fell off of me very quickly. Um, which for me gave me a new lease of life um, and I started to buy fashionable clothes and things like that I decided I wanted to date because I'd not had these normal typical teenage years so I like, had a lot of catching up to do um, but then what happened after probably about a year I'd lost a lot of weight is I developed an eating disorder because it became um, all-consuming I became very obsessed with what I was eating, what I wasn't eating. Mm. And with any kind of addiction, you, you can very quickly become embroiled in those habits. So I was, I became bulimic, which I didn't even realize what it was at the time. Because back then, this is like going back, oh gosh, quite, <laughs> quite a lot of years now, you didn't hear as much about it at all, especially not eating disorders. And uh, the nature, I think, especially of bulimia, it's very, very secretive it holds a lot of shame because it, um, it, 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 the nature of it, what, what you do. So it was, um, do, you, do you want me to go into any detail? Well, let's, let's, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a lot to be shared around this topic. Yeah, sure, Absolutely. sure. Uh, and uh, it's something that uh, it needs to be uh, talked about on a on a very on a different show yeah. that, you know we can yeah. go in more depth because yeah. uh, de definitely there are lots of lots of us out there that we don't really know much about it and uh, yeah. and maybe we think it's only it's just something simple but it's not it's very very deep very very uh, mm. like like an addiction is not easy to get out of it easily. no no uh, so yeah. so but what what i like what i like to to share to share here on the, on the panel yeah. is uh, what did you do you know mm -hmm. to uh, to regain control if you like regain the mm. power uh, and then enjoy eating again yeah and yeah then... yeah so so you're saying like regain control and ironically you feel like you are in control with an eating disorder so that's kind of a double edged sword mm -hmm. But I had therapy for it through the NHS, um, which didn't help me the first time. But years down the line, that did really help me. But it was really um, becoming very aware of what, what was going on in my life that was making me really unhappy. Or certainly keeping me stuck from moving forward. 
having my son um, was a big part of me, my change because all of a sudden it was about somebody else, my, my love for him. Um, so he was a big part of it. I'd always used writing. So I used to keep a diary and a mood diary and just generally writing my feelings. We'd call it journaling now, but that's what I always used to do. So that was because I used to feel um, emotions got stuck inside of me and it was like finding a way to express them. Um, so that was really helpful. And then over the years, I, I had counselling and things like that. But I really got into um, self-development. I became quite spiritual. So using things like meditation, mindfulness. And I'm massive on things like affirmations, using affirmations. So repeatedly, because uh, with an eating disorder, it's a lot about self-loathing. So I had to like really transform a lot. And it was going from that place of self-hatred to, to loving, loving myself, liking myself, respecting myself. And I have done a lot of that through CBT and, yeah, using things like affirmations. Mm. And I still use them now. I just find them really, really powerful. And visualisation, I've always yeah. used that a lot as well, without realising what it was back then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's one of the things I would definitely like to uh, to uh, talk about on the show with you all. Uh, it is the power of affirmations and uh, and the the power of positive mindset. Uh, I know Galina can uh, talk to us a little bit about that as well because it's all about uh, mindset, success mindset, right, mm -hmm. Galina? And uh, and also uh, Judith has got a lot to offer in terms of. Uh, uh, breathing that's something that I find personally very very beneficial uh, when I find I, I catch myself feeling a bit oh, you know how am I going to get out of this or how am I going to move forward with this because you know we all got problems we all got issues uh, and uh, this is part of life and uh, breathing is definitely one thing that I, I, I would definitely definitely recommend as part of uh, my holistic uh, toolkit and I appreciate that the rest of you here on the, on the panel may already use it but breathing consciously you know like really deep breaths and, and Judith can uh, share with us a little bit a bit more in a moment and affirming a uh, positive affirmation so at my, myself I use the the, uh, the very powerful I am I am and then following that you know whatever positive things you you know I say I am love because I want to affirm to myself that I am, I am love. I, I am, you know, loving myself, but also being loved by others. Uh, and, and being lovable is something that not, it's not, doesn't come easy uh, for people because we always put ourselves down. And that's how different disorders or different diseases or different issues, uh, mental issues, emotional issues can come. Because we are, we are really, really strict with ourselves um, that's something that I know from from personal experience that you know we can be really strict with ourselves we're expecting a lot of ourselves uh, and so equally we don't give ourselves you know a you know like a break you know we're always constantly asking again and again and again to perform and we don't get let ourselves off the hook so so these are some of the things that um, I know that causing me stress myself and I'm learning to appreciate where I am and appreciate what steps I've taken so far and become more positive about it rather than, you know, putting myself down or, or, or putting somebody else down. But because that's the other way, you know, doing it, criticizing and blaming others is that's, a, that's what we call the upper limit. So, so being in an in appreciative uh, space, uh, you know, gratitude and kindness, this is, these are the things, I guess, uh, that, that work, that work, you know, when we, when, when we, live with them when we breathe in and out you know being you know what do we call kind set not just mindset being in a kind set so so um judith i'll come to you because uh, because i really like to connect the affirmations that samantha brought in very very nicely there and uh, and also how you use your techniques to help you know really stress and be more in the present moment i guess that's that's something really important too yeah hugely and thank you so much uh, for your sharing samantha and for inviting me here chrisula um, and it's yeah interesting the uh, dads who drink too much and the mums who just uh, who put up with it and don't stand up for us and so that we take on the mantle of being the strong one and mm -hmm. being one who has to cope and the one who has to do everything uh, very similar background myself 
Mm -hmm. And my way of dealing with it, I, I kind of drank too much when I was a kid, but my real way of dealing with it was, was to take control. So to be the one in control and the way, right, mum's not going to speak up for herself, so I'll speak up. Mm -hmm. And the stress, so the interesting thing about that kind of personality type is you are the person who just takes on more and 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 more because I can solve it. You know, it's all right, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And I notice this a lot in my clients who I work with, whether that's individuals or in the corporate space, they will just put up or they will put on or they will take on and don't actually acknowledge it as stress mm. because it's what we get used to and or it's what we believe is expected of us. So maybe you have really high expectations of other people because you have high expectations of yourself because you set high standards and if other people don't live up to it, then you oh, I'll do it. And you take it on. I'll do it. I'll do it. And that doesn't feel like stress because you feel like you're achieving things. But eventually that will build up into overwhelm. Mm -hmm. And different people deal with it in different ways. Uh, for me, it was ironically and sort of an isolation. So although a lot of my time I felt isolated, although I am one of the most social people you will meet and I will be the center of the party. But interestingly, I will be the center of the party. So I'll be the one who throws the party and therefore who doesn't have to actually just spend the whole night with one group of people. So it's that whole teenage angst poems about being alone in a crowded room. Uh, I wrote many of them. Mm. And it's that thing of, I will take it all on, but I won't let anyone near me. And so that thing of not letting people near you or not asking for help, I'm going to take everything on and not ask for help. And that was actually the stress that put me into overwhelm and into, well, if, this, if I ask for help, that's weakness and I don't want to be weak. So I'll, you'll take it all on. And that was the thing that led to, uh, not so long ago, actually, a couple of years ago, me waking up every morning thinking, whose life, whose day to devote, it was a very specific question. It was a very good question because I was a coach by this point. So it was a specificity is good. It mm -hmm. was whose day to day life would it actually affect if I wasn't here anymore? Wow. And it took me a long time to get to the answers. Uh, but thankfully, thankfully, my mum is still single now. And so I was like, my mum, you know, there's no way I could take anything any further than thoughts because I would never do that to my mum. And it was at that point that I realized, hmm, I'm probably a little overwhelmed. <laughs> so it was then that I had to really use all the techniques that I used for myself. And actually, it was that that brought me to the power of the work. So even though, as Christina says, I work with breath and voice vibration and sound healing and combine that with coaching and my other skills to help people really find their truth to be able to express themselves. Mm -hmm. And this for me is the real key for a lot of people is the inability to say, I need help. I can't do this all on my own. Mm. And whether that's in a corporate environment where people are just accepting work being piled on or they have a manager who they um, just, just don't relate to, but they don't feel they have enough power to say yes or to say no mm. or to stand up for themselves and say actually I don't feel like my expertise is being respected or I I can't do this on my own to be able to voice that is is hugely powerful and so many people suffer in silence and that's the challenge it's the suffering in silence feeling like you have to do it on your own and not feeling like you can ask for help whether that is I need someone else to help me with this project or whether this is I'm an alcoholic and I need you to help me. Mm. You know, it, it can be the big things or the little things, but actually all the little things build up and create the stress that people don't know. It's the boiling the frog analogy. Um, 
you know you you put a frog into lukewarm water where it's happy and it's just swimming around and then you turn the heat up and it gradually just goes oh this is nice this is nice this is nice this is nice oh it's getting a bit warmer it's getting oh now i'm dead but you don't people don't put themselves into boiling water because if you put a frog into boiling water it will leap straight out mm. but the stress gradually builds up and then when we hit overwhelm we know so the techniques that i use to help people manage this the first technique is always hopefully if people have come to me before they've hit overwhelm <laughs> then we can just teach the tips if it's if people are already in overwhelm it's about finding the truth that needs to be expressed mm. so what is your deepest truth not the reactionary truth um, but the, what's the deepest truth that needs to be expressed and that's normally something like i need help or um, I need support or whatever that may be. When we've cleared that, the tools and techniques to manage stress so that it doesn't come into overwhelm again, breath is the simplest, easiest mm -hmm. thing that anyone can do. And then the power of coming into your voice vibration, mm -hmm. because vibration very quickly, everything is matter, like cells, your body is matter sound is matter matter affects matter and if a an opera singer can shatter a crystal graph glass by maintaining the frequency your cells when you make sound actually vibrate mm -hmm. and your cells are holding the energetic frequency of everything you've ever experienced so when it comes to voicing it because your voice is vibration mm -hmm. sometimes it gets stuck and we get a frog in the throat we're back to frogs again right um, <laughs> <laughs> so if you feel it getting stuck then bring yourself back into yourself with your voice vibration so breath breathe out through your mouth really fully and as you breathe out feel the tummy contracting so you really get rid of everything and then breathe in through the nose gently and fully and then breathe out through the mouth just really to to release Release, release, release. The exhalation is so important. Most people don't exhale fully or inhale fully. And then to come back into the moment. If you know that, that frenetic stress that we get into, oh my God, I've got so much, how am I gonna do it? All of those thoughts, if you find yourself sighing, it's a sign from your body that you need to breathe. If you're, it's your body trying to let go. Mm. If you catch yourself sighing, if you catch yourself thinking, oh, how am I gonna do it? What am I gonna do next? Oh my goodness, I can't, if you're doing this, Mm -hmm. if you're pulling your hair out if you're rubbing your eyes all of these are signs that you need to stop and come into the moment and breathe and if you place your hand on your chest or your belly you then make it physical mm -hmm. so you're bringing yourself away physically away from your brain and give yourself that touch into your body and then the simplest thing after breathing is just to hum and if you can hum just for 30 seconds, mm -hmm. you'll feel that connection with your body. You'll feel your body vibrating. And that helps transmute or transform the stress energy so you can come back into the moment and go, okay, what's, what's really important? What do I need? Mm -hmm. What do I need to do? What do I need to ask for? So if you can ask yourself that question in a, in a clear moment of moment then yes that's what yeah. i offer yes and may i add also a bit of singing maybe you know if you like you like a particular song you can put the music yeah. up and start singing as well that's again singing, that's fun start moving, yes. start yeah. moving. Like, uh, start, move. start around the living room but if you it's for that catching yourself yeah. that, mm -hmm. like samantha was saying the first step is awareness the mm -hmm. first step is catching mm -hmm. yourself you know, with Samantha, it was catching herself eating. It was catching herself having the, the thoughts that led to the eating or the feelings that led to the eating. With this, it's, it's what is your awareness? What is your pattern? I know my pattern is I start thinking, oh, God, right. Oh, God, I've got so much. And I know that that is my pattern. If I sigh and I'm doing that, I'm like, okay. Stop, moment, breathe, stillness. What's really important? Mm -hmm. and, and then starting to ask, for what you need yes start to ask for what you need that's another interesting one because uh, again uh, i'm very much uh, relating to what you're saying judith as well that uh, you know you you 
you know, you want to find answers. I want to find answers for everything. <laughs> you know, yeah. find solutions to everything. You know, uh, and and uh, and 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 then that that adds a lot of pressure, a lot of uh, expectations, a lot of you know. And then you get a point of of uh, overwhelm, of course, and burnout. Uh, and it all and comes down to control. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm saying. You're just trying to com control em emotions by eating, trying to control weight by eating, then vomiting, trying to control, control, control. Stress. We, we're stressed when we feel out of control. And that's all solar plexus stuff, but that's a whole other. Yes, yes, we, it's all good. It's all good to, to, to share all of that as well, because yeah. it is about you know, understanding how our energy is working in our system yeah. as well. Uh, we, we are bodies, but also we are spirits in the body. So, so that's something I also like to, to share and make people aware that uh, your thoughts, of course, you have heard of, of the law of attraction and that your thoughts you know, can have an impact on the way you feel and... and the actions you're taking that we're all all coming together we are not separate we it's not we're not just physical experiences we are also experiencing uh, through lots of interactions with other people so if we don't express our needs people will never know your partner your colleagues your your bosses will never know so what have you got to lose at the end of the day you know you may get a promotion you may get the sack but there will be you know opportunity for you to go out there for another job or find another partner that will really, really honor you and vice versa. So, so what I'm saying is, it takes a lot of courage uh, to um, honor your voice. It takes a lot of courage. And sometimes it's not easy to do it on your own. That's why there are lots of uh, books out there, lots of uh, people, coaching, coaches, mentors like ourselves here, that we are here to help because we actually, we were in a situation where we got really stressed and burned out. <laughs> you know, I, I have been in that situation and I believe others here, you may have been in that situation too. So, so you're not on your own. So the, those, of, those of you who are watching this back, you're not on your own. You're not on your own thinking, oh, you know, why on earth I got myself into that situation and then blame yourself and put yourself down. Uh, it, is, it is okay to be in a situation like this, but it's also okay to find solutions and ask for help. Uh, and, and, uh, and that's the other thing that is, it's, it is a learning process, you know, to ask for help, ask for guidance. And, and that's, that's something that's, I hope that you're going to get some, some inspiration and some uh, empowering tools and tips from, from, uh, from today's uh, show here. So, um, Judy, thank you so much for, 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 for sharing. There may be a chance for you to share a little bit more later because, uh, and if you'd like to, uh, yeah, I also like to, to bring things together. Judy also was uh, one of my guests on my Healthy Healing radio show. So, so if you'd like to hear more of what uh, our, my conversation, Soulful Musings, uh, was all about around breathwork and sound healing, then I will put a link down so you can go back and, and listen to it at some point, you know, when you find the moment for you. So, or if you're in LA, come and see me on the 20th of April. I'm at an event in LA. So. There you are. And you are in LA now, right, Judy? No, I'm, I'm in Georgia right now. Oh, you're in Georgia. Okay. Last week, Atlanta this week, LA next week. Fabulous. Back in London, and London on the 25th of April. Fabulous. Fabulous. Love it. Love it. So, um, okay. Now, um, again, I'd like to, to reiterate one thing that lots of this uh, holistic help, uh, self care tips and tools, uh, you will, I am, I have been blessed and to have interviewed and have uh, connected with a number of holistic health educators over the last 10 years. And a selection of those people have been part of my book, The Book of Soul Musings. It's an award-winning book. Uh, Sue Rich is one of the contributors co-authoring in the book. A number of other people as well, 30 contributors from eight different countries. What I would say, if you, if you like some inspiration and then without you know, spending too much money thinking what way I'm going to follow, which person I'm going to work with, well, why don't you invest in, in a book? And I'm sure that, you know, you will find so much inspiration in it. Uh, and then it is, it is on a special offer during April. I will share the link. I'm not going to talk about it anymore here because I like to come to Galina. Galina, hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, Cristula. Thank so, you very much for inviting me. Thank you for, for, for being here and, uh, and bringing your, your positive mindset into the whole complex uh, scenario of what we call stress and sometimes 
you know, overwhelm and, and, uh, and, and worry and anxiety and frustration. What, how do you deal with it? What, what is your, your way forward? Uh, you know, how do you help your clients? Yes, very good question. I love what Samantha was talking about, about very stressful situation in life and Judy teaches us about breathing. This is all we, we use, different affirmation, breathing, everything. But another important thing to understand uh, that the, we live in the ocean of motion. Mm -hmm. So we stress now in this particular moment, but in five minutes will be totally different time. Mm. And I always uh, teach my clients, my students say, just ask yourself a question. What are you stressed about now? Mm -hmm. Is it important mm -hmm. in an hour? Mm -hmm. Is it important tomorrow? Is it important in a week time? Mm -hmm. And you know what they say very often? They say no. <laughs> so the question, why are you stressed? What to be stressed about? Mm -hmm. So it's very important to think this way. But when we're stressed, we just locked the absolute our mind is locked we don't think this way mm -hmm. but when you learn when you learn like you mentioned Chris, so you learn about the positive thinking you learn um uh, about the the law of attraction you learn about the, our mind what i've been learning for the last 30 years and when you know how the mind works so you can use all these tools so whatever you know people stress so easy for somebody cross your you know, when you drive, somebody crossed your road and people start to shout and, uh, you know, be stressed. Why? Just ask, just smile and ask, is it important in five minutes? No, it's already five minutes ago. It's been there. It's not important. Love it. And uh, I want to give just a simple, simple example. I remember one of my clients came to my session and she was absolutely furious about something, situation. Somebody said something. I said, okay. Just let breathe, take a deep breath, and just, can you please just write down this situation on the paper? And she wrote the situation. I said, okay, let's step like out of the situation and read it. So when, we, when she read this situation and I, and I look at her, she was laughing. I said, what's happened? What just happened? She said, there is no situation. <laughs> I said, this is so true. So she came angry about something and when she read it, she, she wrote the situation and read it herself and understand nothing to be worried about. There is no situation. You see how it is important, just so simple. Because we, we worry, the 80%, statistically, 80% we worry about nothing. And we know this very well. Mm. It's only maybe something key about 18, 20%, really something serious things to worry about, but they can be solved. But the, the most of the worry come from, from nothing. Somebody said something about us. Somebody, uh, I don't know, you've, you've heard something that you don't like. And people just stress so simply. So the, the really very important question, ask yourself, is it important? Yeah. Will it be important tomorrow in a week? And I know it will help millions of millions of people <laughs> to get out of the stress. Because yeah. it's not. Yes, yes, yes. It is uh, worry. It is. It is uh, uh, something that you know. I, I, I can say that I, I, I tend to worry a lot. Uh, you know, now I become more conscious. It is. It's also a trait of personality as well to worry. Uh, but do we gain anything out of it? That's the question. And then again, you know, when you find yourself in a situation, Galina, that's that's great. You know, you say, okay, you see this the whole thing from you know the bigger picture. The you know change your perception around it how important is it out of 10 you know is it is it going to 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 uh, you know is it a matter of life and death you know is it going to change in five minutes or not you know these are these are really you know we don't really think when we are in that sort of stressful situation and that's for me that's what it is that's why i'm bringing you here that's why i'm creating this uh, this this opportunity for us to talk about these things because on our own we don't think like that we don't feel like that we don't understand sometimes you know we feel isolated but when you are with other people and we share this inspiration something kicks in and i would love to be to believe that this is how we become more conscious beings and, and then when we become more conscious then we have more access to things they are available to us they are, this is this is not just available to only a few of us you can have this relaxed and, and peaceful life you know Anytime you want, you can just switch on and switch off. Yeah. As simple as yes. that. Right? 
And um, it's simple, but big thing to know this the knowledge what yeah. the most of people are lacking. They just don't have this knowledge. Mm -hmm. And the big thing, just I ask just everyone, just go and learn about personal development, learn about the positive mindset. It's very, very important. It's so easy. It's so easy for us. You just go on Google uh, and find something interesting or find some of us, just connect with some of us here or just get a book on Amazon. It's so, so easy now. It's not something closed for us. It's available. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of fact that the person wants to uh, have a better life. And stop sabotaging yourselves because yes, that's, that's what the stress does to all of us. We are self-sabotaging. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, and you say, you say, why are we doing that? It's just because you are afraid or scared of being the beautiful, amazing being that you're destined to be. And we tend to just you know, really cramming ourselves with too much worry, too much anxiety, too much frustration, too much anger, too much do, 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 do. And, then, and then thinking ahead, thinking in the future, why is this, why is that? And we never appreciate the moment. So that's how stress is, is caused, as simple as that. It's nothing to do with the colleague. It's nothing to do with your boss. It's nothing to do with your, you know, it's how you appreciate who you are and how life can be so magical for you. As long as, as long as you just take the moment and really connect what's really important. What's really important to you. Uh, and, and worrying is not going to bring that beauty in your life. You know, all the stress. So on the, on the other hand, it creates all of these uh, hormonal imbalances that I'm going to come to Sue at the moment because uh, she, can, uh, she can talk about that, you know, how physiologically, you know, we are affected by stress, particularly one area that uh, I have come to appreciate more and more over the last few years, how your, your liver, for example, can be affected by stress, but also your gut health can be affected by stress too. So I, I, part of what I, what I love doing is I work with psychology of color, but equally color as an energy, vibrational healing. So, so you, you can see the bottles behind here. Again, talking, uh, Judy was talking about sad healing and cell memory. Color is another vibrational tool that works at a very, very deep level and then cleanses. So springtime, folks, is fabulous time for cleansing. Fabulous time. Sue, I know I've heard all of this. I have been a very good student of yours and follower of yours. <laughs> so cleansing is something that, you know, it's something that, you know, it, it, it helps us so, so much. It helps our system, you know, to reboot our system, to re-energize our system. And, and spring is a fabulous time for that. So I have uh, written a blog article about getting to know your liver and love your liver. And how you can do that, you can actually receive lots of guidance and connect with particular um, um, colors that can help you with that as well. And one of the colors that can help you with that to detoxify, to cleanse, to release toxicity, which is, comes from stress, uh, is uh, the olive, olive color, the green olive color. Uh, and, uh, it, and a particular, because I also w work with essential oils. So, so it's wonderful also, part of the relaxation and living a stress-free life is to take some amazing baths. Have, you, know, you may have heard of sound baths. You may have heard of uh, forest bathing. Have you heard of forest bathing? When you go into the woods and then you connect with wood energy. Um, again, you know, I am into color bathing. So you're actually pouring the essential oils and the beauty of color connect with the, all these, you see the bottles here. Um, and then you, you have this amazing color bath experience, which again, immersing in, in the bath, as you may have heard, it could be, you know, sea salt, you know, it could be different types of um, other essential oils you can use. But in my case, I, I also introduce you to the magic and the power of color. So uh, if you'd like to know more about color, I run webinars, I run courses, I offer lots of opportunities for you to connect with color. And for you personally, or if you'd like to know more about it and bring it into your profession and then work with it in a different way as well. So, um, so color can be used also for adults and also with children. So, so that's another thing. So if you are curious to know more about color healing, I would love to, I would love to get to, to connect with you. So Sue, 
so I'm coming to you, my dear, because uh, because it's uh, I, I know I know you've got so much to offer and to say. You're also the author of the Love Your Gut book, and you have been co-author in, in a number of books, including my book, the Book of Self Musings. And there's a, a section uh, in the book uh, which is dedicated to uh, our physical well-being and conscious living. Living and uh, Sue, you have actually. Um, uh, contributed a uh, part about cleansing and detoxifying and uh, the importance of gut health so from from your perspective what give us a, give us something as a takeaway you know something that we can uh, we can bring into our everyday life and to to love our gut more yes um yeah i suppose that my story was um you know for for so many years um I was working hard, long hours, looking after everybody else and not looking after myself. And stress was something that probably didn't realize at the time that I lived with day in and day out for, yeah. I couldn't tell you how many years. Um, but what I didn't realize was the damage it was doing to my health. Mm -hmm. Um, which really sort of culminated, if you like, in a big wake up call uh, about seven or eight years ago now, um, when I just started having terrible fatigue, uh, brain fog, memory problems, um, joint pain, muscle pain, um, you know, all sorts of things going on, if you like, health wise. And life became very, very difficult. And also I was running a business as well. And um, basically what I found out was that I, I got diagnosed with Hashimoto's disease, which is an autoimmune disease um, that affects your thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, a cut a long story short, I was told by my doctor that I'd be on the medication for the rest of my life. I couldn't recover from this. And for me, that was a huge, big wake-up call to really look at my life how I was living and really that I needed to do something different because what I really realized was that being in this mode of like busy, 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 and you become addicted to busyness really. Mm -hmm. But what it is, is actually, it's a smoke screen <laughs> to not really wanting to take the time to sit down and really look at your life and realize, am I really living my life the way I really want to live it? Or am I living somebody else's version of my life? Mm -hmm. And the big wake up call I had from the health things, look, you know, I want to be active. I've got lots of things I want to do. To live a compromised life was just totally unacceptable. And that made me make some big life changing decisions of taking time out for myself, and really starting to deal with some of the, the mental stuff, if you like. So a big thing for me was starting doing meditation, which was a sort of start of uh, my journey of sort of changing everything in my life for the better. Because I got to the point really where I can tell you that there was no joy, no fun in my life. And, and I guess I knew deep down in my heart that I wasn't really living the life I wanted to. But you get so caught up with, What's if I change things? What's so and so going to say? What's my husband going to think if I want to do something different? What's my family going to say? And yet, at the end of the day, <laughs> do you know what? None of that matters. You've just got to do what you what what is right for you. And the key thing for me was I led me on a journey of doing research, and basically that research um, led me to understand that my health issues were all down to what was happening in my gut. And when, when the problem is that when you're stressed, you produce a lot of cortisol and cortisol is a sugar. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, because of that, you're adding a load of sugar into, into, your, into your body. So, you know, as you said, it affects your liver, but it also affects the microbiome, your gut microbiome, all the bacteria in there. And, and if your diet is high in sugar and high in refined carbs, that all feeds the bad bacteria in your gut. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, the anxiety and the level to be able to, that you respond to stress, because I was always, it was like, you know, snap, 
so quickly to, to go into stress mode. Um, but a lot of that is actually driven by what's actually happening in your gut. And you've got the, the gut is connected to the brain, but it's also about what you're eating. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if you're eating really good, healthy, natural food, your whole response to stress and everything, your whole system is calmer physiologically, you know, throughout the whole body. So you don't become so, you know, quick to respond to, uh, to stressful situations. But equally, you know, for me, as, as everybody else has said, um, it's been a lot of personal development, learning how to deal with the negative voice in my head, letting go of perfection, because I've always been this perfectionist. And I think the biggest thing actually for so many of us is that we're driven because we want to, pe we want to please everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we take on more and more and more and more stuff because we're too scared to say no. But also we don't want to say no because we don't want to upset somebody. But we also don't want to say no because if we think we can't cope with all of this stuff, we're a failure, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, and it's the whole thing again, I know I felt that I couldn't ask for help because if I asked for help, then I must be a failure because I must be able to cope with all of this. Um, but for me, actually reaching out and getting some help was a huge turning point in uh, getting me to, to make the changes and, you know, learning about how to, um, develop a positive mindset, but it's really becoming aware of when that negative voice starts chattering in your head mm -hmm. um, and being able to go stop <laughs> and turn around what you're saying into something positive rather than the negative. And it is about loving yourself and, you know, knowing that taking care of yourself is the most important thing in the world. And for me, you know, I, I had this big wake up call that, you know, Without your health, you really do not have anything in life. Mm. It's absolutely the linchpin, the fundamental. And when you get your health into a really good place, it's amazing that actually magically other stuff in your life all starts to flow in a much, much more, you know, easy and, uh, and good, good way. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, um, it's, it is... It's, fasc it's fascinating how we humans, we can have a wonderful life on this planet Earth, but we also, know, we also mess it up big time by asking ourselves to do too much. And, and it's, it is incredible. Uh, That's so much. <laughs> yeah, we, we are, we are, I am here, you're here, we are all here to enjoy this, this amazing uh, journey called life. And uh, I'm going to to say thank you to all of you and to to you know to 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 complete uh, tonight's uh, stress awareness show uh, on Golden News TV and you know if you, if you take something out of this is actually really stop and ask yourself a question you know am I leading the life I want to live am I actually offering value to other people by being stressed you're not. Uh, am I actually doing any any favors to myself? You're not. And uh, if you are healthy and stress, who would actually be there for you? Uh, you're there for everybody else, but who is there for you when you're being stressed? You no, know, people don't, don't. We don't really like being always near people that are full of irritation and anger, and frustration. So, so just do yourself a favor and then find ways to relax. Find ways to connect with people that you are actually they're going to uh, inspire you or and you inspire them as well and laugh laugh for me laugh is it's one of the, the best when I appreciate I catch myself not laughing a lot I said mm, something not right here Priscilla because I am I am my best when I am smiling and positive and, and laughing uh, and uh, that's something that, you know, we should not forget about, you know, we really need to concentrate on, on the tiny little things that bring us happiness and joy. Uh, tiny little things for me now, springtime is the best, is one of the best times of the year because we have got so much to celebrate and the birds are keep singing and singing and remind us how wonderful life is. So, so if you, if there's nothing else you can do, just connect with nature. For me, that's, that's one of the wonderful 
tools we've got around us, connect with nature. Uh, yes, go and do a, a bit of forest bathing, connect with wood energy. Spring is wood energy, in, in, uh, in, uh, according to Chinese um, uh, philosophy, uh, which I totally thoroughly appreciate and, and, and embrace. So go and connect with some wood energy and, and uh, go for some long walks, movement, keep moving. You know, a stagnation doesn't help our system physiologically, doesn't help it, but doesn't help our brain to be clear, doesn't help, you know, uh, uh, like uh, being, bring flow into your life, you know, bring new ideas in. So keep moving. And these are all reminders for me too, because you know what, <laughs> you know, we, sometimes we do forget, but we do also need these kind of reminders. And, uh, and uh, whether it is in the form of a show like this or being in a networking event, connect with other people or writing, writing your thoughts out, expressing yourself, honoring your voice or, um, or writing your own book, if you like, or reading somebody's book, uh, Investing in a, in, a, in a mentoring coaching session, you cannot find solutions for everything. It's okay to get some help, some support, some guidance from other people. I'm going to leave you with that. You know, celebrate life with love, intention, flow, and ease. Uh, this uh, show is going to be uploaded on my YouTube channel. You'll be able to watch it back again. Please be generous. With, uh, with it, you know, share, because when you share, you care, and, and uh, share with people, share, you know, because our time here and our experiences and our expertise can be, can help somebody else, and that's, that's what we're here for, right? We're here to be able to be of service to other people. So, so if you like, if you like to say good night or goodbye, you're very welcome. Uh, I'm sending you a big kiss uh, from, uh, from here, from my sanctuary of color, to wherever you are, and uh, thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you for bringing your, your joy into, into this world. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Crystal, for organizing it. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye